All right, so what might cause a shift in the short rent aggregate supply curve? We've got some historical evidence from the 1970s that if oil prices increase rapidly, the short rent aggregate supply curve decreases. And this is due to the fact that oil is such an important commodity input for most types of production. So let's start from an initial equilibrium that is at long run and short run equilibrium. In other words, where the economy is coming to rest in the short run, where AD and SRAS intersect, also happens to be at the potential output where the long run aggregate supply curve is. So we're experiencing a price level of 120 and a real GDP of 6. Now oil prices shot up rapidly two times in the 1970s. This is one of the known shifters of the short run aggregate supply curve um, because it affects cost of production for many, many types of producers. So as cost of production rise, you can think about the movement in the short run aggregate supply curve in one of two ways. The first is that at every quantity, producers need to charge more because of the increased cost of production. Um, so you'll get something like this. Or at every price level, their profits decline compared to what they were before because of the higher costs, and so they choose to produce less. Either way, you have a short run aggregate supply curve that is further to the left or it's decreased compared to what it was before. The resulting new short run macroeconomic equilibrium will be, as we'd expect, at a higher price level and a lower GDP than before. So what we have is a decline in GDP. Again, you have a recessionary gap here, the gap between the potential output of the economy and the actual current output. And you also have inflation, right? So the price level has increased from what it was before. So this combination of, combination of inflation plus economic GDP stagnation is called stagflation. So the stagflation of the 1970s is captured by the leftward shift of the aggregate supply curve. This is a particularly nasty type of recession. Normal recessions are from shocks in the demand curve, leftward shifts in the demand curve, but the 1970s saw several leftward shifts of the short-run aggregate supply curve leading to um, both unemployment and inflation. And you can see why policymakers freaked out a little bit because really the only thing that government can do through fiscal policy is to move the aggregate demand curve. And if they move the aggregate demand curve upwards by cutting taxes or increasing government spending, you would have um, a solution to the output problem, but you would have created um, even higher prices as you move up to this new equilibrium. Inflation gets even worse. Um, likewise, if the government would have practiced contractionary um, fiscal policy to reduce the size of um, inflation, they would have pulled the aggregate demand curve to the left, um, which would solve your inflation problem, right, because now you would move back to um, a lower level of inflation. But you would have made your GDP problem even worse. Unemployment would be very high here. So it became clear in the late 70s that fiscal policy could not solve all of the economy's problems, especially if you had a recession coming from the supply side. And there you have it.